this is Tony Jenkins and welcome to this ECPD module which is on capital versus revenue. In this module you will cover why the distinction is important between capital and revenue receipts and deductions, the issues that need to be considered and you will be able to apply the principles to case study scenarios, the facts and conclusions in the two case studies and the changes in the Finance No. 2 Act 2017. This module will be relevant to all accountants but particularly those with business or corporate clients. As an introduction, the capital revenue distinction is important for both receipts and deductions. For receipts, each is subject to a separate taxing code. For deductions, it is mainly relevant for in trade computation. There is no immediate allowance for capital expenditure. You should be aware of a significant block of case law looking at various points. We shall examine this area through a couple of case studies. Let's look at the first case study set out on this screen and the next. Cars R Us Limited operates as car dealers with an extensive network of dealerships around the country. In one location, a car showroom underwent substantial refurbishment. During this time, about eight months in total, the showroom remained open for business. This was to honour the agreement with the manufacturer and maintain custom, especially for the MOT centre. The company obtained quotes from the surveyors and builders involved in the refurbishment on two bases. Firstly, that the showroom would close and give them a clear site to work on, and secondly, that the showroom would remain open. The additional costs in keeping the showroom open were £40,000. This second option was taken. Are the costs of refurbishment, including the additional amount, revenue in nature? The company also operates a petrol filling station at one of its car showrooms. The company entered into an agreement with Texaco to sell only Texaco products for a period of five years in return for a one-off payment of £250,000. In the accounts, the amount is being written down by equal monthly amounts over the five-year period. Our repairs revenue costs. When looking at repair costs, they could be capital if replacing of the entirety, or there is an improvement element in the costs. Although it should be remembered that replacing old parts with new is not necessarily improvement. We need to consider the application of the principles. The description of work here suggests it is enhancement work, so would be capital in nature. Can they argue that these are deferred repairs? Remember the Odeon case, which should be regarded as very important. What about notional repairs? We also need to consider in this case the deduction of additional costs. What is the nature of this expenditure? Could it be argued that it, this is to allow trade to continue, so is normal revenue cost? Is there an asset being brought into existence? You should not underestimate the importance of expenditure bringing into an asset of an enduring nature. HMRC will probably want to argue that this is simply part of the cost of doing work. If the underlying expenditure is capital, so is the additional expenditure. In conclusion, there is no right or wrong answer. We would need to do detailed analysis on work undertaken. This part of the case study is based on Mann, Crossman and Paulin Limited versus Compton. In this case, the court decided that building work was capital and that additional costs should just follow that. What about the receipt from Texaco for exclusivity? There are a series of cases about whether such payments are capital or revenue, and they include 
Evans and Wheatley involving the reimbursement of revenue, Walter W. Saunders v. Dixon used for capital, and Vanderberg's Limited v. Clark dealing with the cancellation of the whole business. And the final outcome, based on the case of Tanfield Limited v. Carr, the receipts were of a revenue nature, not for the cancellation of a major contract. They were made in the course of trading and not specifically for capital. So the decision would be that they are not capital. Let's look at the second case study. Club Old Area Limited is the hospitality trade operating a number of pubs and restaurants. For many years, Sunday opening of pubs was not permitted in Belizea, although clubs and restaurants have been permitted to open. The company, in conjunction with the brewery landlord of its pub sites in Belizea and others in the trade, campaigned continuously to change the law which they argued, amongst other things, was unfair and discriminatory. Eventually, an act was passed permitting the question of Sunday opening hours to be decided by poll in each borough. The company spent £75,000 stimulating interest and obtaining the signatures necessary to require polls to be held. As a result of the polls, only 16 of the pubs where operated a restaurant now remain closed on Sundays. In a separate transaction, the company has lost 10 of its restaurants in theme pubs when the brewery took back the tenancies. The tenancy agreements were determinable on notice without compensation. The brewery paid the company £50,000 in compensation. First, looking at a payment to remove trading restrictions. What does the Atherton test suggest? There was a refinement of the principle of securing of a benefit in other cases. This does not appear to be so black and white as suggested by Atherton. The Morgan versus Tate and Lyle case is very informative in this type of case. There is no obvious other capital asset that has been amended. What is the potential answer? This is based on the case of Cooper versus Rimney Breweries Limited. Costs were merely one of the incidents of carrying on a train. It went to the High Court who thought this decision was okay, but close to the line. Outcome of this case study. This is based on the case of Murray versus Goodhues. Receipts were held to be capital receipts. They were made to maintain the brewery's name. Additionally, they were not linked to future trading nor connected with profits. So therefore, they could not arise from the trade. Under the Finance Act number 2, 2017, 2017-18 sees the introduction of the statutory simplified cash basis for unincorporated property businesses. The capital expenditure rules for the cash basis for property businesses also apply for trades. For each type of property business run, the simplified cash basis must be used rather than the accruals basis unless any of the conditions in the notes apply. Expenses are recognised when paid and must be incurred wholly and exclusively for the purpose of the property business. Under the simplified cash basis, the capital versus revenue distinction is removed and all expenditure incurred wholly and exclusively for the purpose of the property business is allowed as a deduction from income unless it falls into any of the categories on the next slide. Acquisition or disposal of a whole or part of a property business. Provision, alteration or disposal of land. An asset used in a dwelling house. This exclusion does not apply to FHL businesses in the UK or the EEA. Non-depreciating assets 
i.e. a useful life of 20 years or more, assets not acquired or created for use on a continuing basis in a trade, e.g. expenditure on goodwill, cars, although capital allowances can be claimed by commercial and furnished holiday letting businesses, intangible assets unless the asset has a definite fixed life of fewer than 20 years, and finally financial instruments. In summary, the key things to remember from this module are 1. The basic distinction between capital and revenue 2. The principles of how you would consider arguing these cases 3. Guidance from the decided cases and finally, the changes in the Finance Act No. 2 Act 2017. I trust that you have found this module which deals with the capital versus revenue question informative. You can print out your personal certificate by clicking on the link. Goodbye and thank you for using CCH ECPD.